Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at out here on this uh, Tuesday. November 19th, 2024 is a date, about 1048 a.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity shows a three-pointer across the Mediterranean. Also, uh, a little 1.6 there in Southern California. Let's go ahead and check out the latest uh, earthquake activity out here on the globe. Uh, a few areas showing a little bit of movement here this morning with a four-pointer off uh, into the Chile area, just offshore it looks like, or maybe onshore. Uh, 24 miles deep here into the subduction zone. Uh, checking out the California area. Uh, a couple smaller quakes here this morning. Nothing big overnight. Um, well, I guess we had a 2.5 down here on the uh, southern end of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. This area yesterday had a little bit of swarming down here around the Salton Sea. A couple earthquakes here to the west as well of the Salton Sea area this morning. So just overall keeping an eye on things here. Uh, today, uh, as always, got to make sure you have some type of earthquake plan just in case today could be the day. You never know. Got a massive low pressure center offshore uh, to the northwest here. It's supposed to bring us a whole bunch of rainfall here. We're expecting about seven to eight inches of rainfall in a uh, two to three day period up here where I live. So, of course, low pressure systems there. We, we've seen hurricanes and typhoons and whatnot affect uh, the plate tectonics out here throughout the years. The pressure differences and the gradients there tend to uh, add a little bit of strain out there in certain areas. So we'll see if things come on the uh, uptick in terms of earthquake activity following this uh, massive low pressure center uh, just off the Oregon coast. I'll show you guys that here towards the end of this video. But uh, expecting a whole bunch of rain up north. Uh, for the meanwhile, not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening out there in the uh, Oregon-Washington area. Uh, some movement here from yesterday, mainly yesterday, around the Hebgen Lake Estates area. And a uh, little bit of movement there in Yellowstone, really nothing big. Um, let me bring up the Yellowstone overview here real quick and we'll see what's going on. A um, couple earthquakes there showing up on the map this morning, maybe one or two. Uh, but the majority of the activity there from yesterday, really not seeing anything of significant value here today. Uh, yeah, there's that one quake that showed up. Looks like about 7.30 in the morning. Um, and that's going to be um, 6.30. I guess that'd be 6.30 my time, 7.30 mountain time for a little 1.4. So not a big earthquake, but it did show up there on the seismograph stations. Uh, the rest of the area out here, uh, aside from movement yesterday in the oil fields, uh, one little earthquake in the new Madrid seismic zone this morning, a 1.8 and um, that's about it older movement there in alabama from yesterday uh, let's see what else we got overnight or uh in the last 24 hours here as far as the largest magnitude goes 5.6 from yesterday uh, so far today a little bit of shaking there after midnight my time in the philippines for a five pointer uh, not a big earthquake but uh We'll see how today plays out in terms of the elevated activity or potential elevated activity. Uh, Japan there is showing a little earthquake. Uh, about a minute later, some adjustment going on there across the China Lake area of Southern California. That uh, is going to be this region right about here is where that uh, activity is being picked up. A little 1.6 there on the graph. Been noticing a lot of smaller earthquake activity here on this station with very minimal reporting of said earthquakes on that seismo. So uh, I think we got more of a swarm going on here than what is being um, shown there on the earthquake 3D uh, on the earthquake map here from the USGS. Also one on the Imperial Fault. It looks like uh, 2.7 here within the last uh, four to five minutes or so. So things are starting to adjust accordingly out here. That's on the uh, on the Imperial Fault. So that would make it the second 2.5 and above earthquake here so far today. Looks like things are wanting to move down here across this southern end of the state. Of course, that uh, somewhat connects up here across the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. We all know this thing is pretty much about as wound up as it can get. We're looking at over 300 years of built up strain accumulated there on the southern branch. 
And uh, I've been hearing about this since I was a kid. I'm not going to go into strictly what my age is, but my parents used to tell me, hey, Southern California is expecting a big one any day. And that was, uh, well, was, you know, some time ago. So uh, each minute, each second here uh, puts us closer to an 8.1 earthquake on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. And this is well overdue. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not well overdue because it, it is. Uh, I worry about uh, any type of microquake swarm around the area or even maybe a two or one pointer that could possibly trigger a cha uh, chain of events out here that could create a domino effect and trigger the uh, southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. That's why I like to pay very close attention to what's happening here, literally within miles of that section. All right, so we'll continue to watch that. Japan did have an earthquake out here. Um, USGS not reporting it. Looks like a fairly deep earthquake here on the EMSC Globe five-pointer. Um, that just came in 248 kilometers deep for that quake. Uh, that did show up here on the uh, seismograph station right there on Japan. And again, uh, about a minute or two later, some adjustment going on there across the eastern area of the plate boundary. So... Things are starting to get put into motion here, it looks like. All right, uh, anything else on there? Uh, let's see here. Typical movement. I'm not seeing anything of any abnormal activity out here across the globe. Uh, some older movement there from yesterday, north of Iceland and Greenland. The rest of the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Uh, space weather activity. Uh, got a little bit of flaring going on here. Upper sea flare, it looks like, from a far side sunspot on the western limb. Uh, that area now starting to depart, about ready to be out of sight, out of mind. We're left with uh, a few different regions back here that are uh, fairly complex in their magnetic structure. That's going to be this area right here. Notice the peppered areas of different colors. Also uh, another sunspot group there that could harbor uh, maybe some complexity there within that sunspot core as well. So we'll have to watch that regional group as it comes a little bit further into the Earth-directed view. Uh, it is fairly bright out here on the UV image, so that tells me right there we got some things uh, starting to flare up out there on the eastern uh, quadrant of the sun. Overall flare threat right now remains minimal at 10% chance for an X flare. Uh, M flare at 50, C flare around 99% chance or so. No major roars there in the forecast for now. Uh, Storm Prediction Center out here for severe weather. Not a whole lot for uh, severe weather. Uh, in the uh, convective um, models. Maybe a little 2% chance there of tornado activity down south, but really not that big of a deal. We are dealing with a, uh, a massive low pressure center just off the coast out here, just getting geared up. Now they call this a bomb cyclone here because it's just developing and it's going to really drop in pressure here as we head uh, into uh, the next couple days. Uh, more specifically, it looks like Wednesday uh, we're going to get slammed here. Look at that pressure out there. It almost looks like a hurricane, doesn't it? Almost like a Category 4 hurricane, uh, I guess, is what the pressure uh, resemblance is going to be between the two. Uh, but we're going to be dealing with a massive atmospheric river that stretches all the way back here across the Pacific, aimed right at Northern California. And uh, we're expecting quite a bit of rainfall accumulation. Let me show you guys the... Uh, uh, ECMWF model. This is just, let me go here in the next couple days. This goes to about Saturday night. Check this out. That is impressive rainfall totals out here for this area. Uh, probably around five inches or so, maybe more around my neck of the woods in Chico. Of course, Redding up here gets a lot more being up here in the hills. Almost eight inches of rain expected there over the next couple days uh, in that area. Uh, it's going to be a dandy of a storm it's going to be a warmer system as well so we're really not expecting low snow levels it's going to be a uh, higher elevation snow probably above seven eight thousand feet or so um let me see what these guys are stating a lot of warmer uh, subtropical moisture coming in so that is uh what uh, that's why we're going to see a lot of rainfall the higher peaks there around mount shasta and whatnot maybe could see feet of snow uh quite a few feet Above Chester, around Mount Lassen area, could see a lot of snow as well. But again, this is generally going to be a, a, a more of a rainmaker out here. Um, so for the folks that aren't seeing snow uh, below the seven, eight thousand foot level, we're going to get quite a bit of rainfall out here. Let me tell you, going to be a big deal. 
uh, current satellite imagery. Let's see what we got out here. Uh, there's the developing low pressure system. Looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, that's the blue. Let's see here. Here's visible infrared. I kind of like the blue status here. You can just barely see that area of circulation right here. Kind of looks like a hurricane. Goodness. Um, so that is going to develop right at this moisture plume here and that low pressure is going to provide the convection needed to really soak the northern california area northward uh, i'm thinking sacramento northward here i don't think sacramento is going to get a whole lot of rain uh, but i think that's going to be the area uh, northward where we're going to see the most precipitation area south here you'll be lucky if you see a few light showers out there around the san joaquin valley but uh, hey I mean, that's a fairly impressive storm. We've we've only picked up here about a quarter of an inch of rain so far this rainy season. And this will put us uh, hopefully at normal, if not above normal, rainfall for uh, this time of year for us here in Northern California. But, uh, yeah, look at that massive, beautiful low-pressure center. Going to be parked right offshore there. But uh, it's going to be a series of storms that come in. Let me show you guys the GFS model here for the uh the west coast there it is out there beautiful uh that's going to provide a lot of rainfall for uh wednesday thursday going to shift a little bit northward but then it's going to come back it looks like that far as that moisture plume goes to hit us into friday again with sufficient moisture and maybe even another strong system behind that if that's that's another impressive storm we could probably pick up another three to four inches of rainfall on top of this expected five inches that we're already getting uh so we got a dandy of a of a system coming up here not for sure what's spinning offshore off southern california but that's a ways into this uh into december so we'll have to watch that but hey rainfall accumulated precipitation runs are absolutely beautiful i'm loving it i may uh jump outside here later tonight i might wait till tomorrow when it's raining uh to fire up the barbecue but uh, expect quite a bit of rainfall out here folks and uh they're already talking about some flooding potential out here uh and if that's the case and i'll be out uh, probably covering this here for some uh local uh news agencies uh, in terms of flooding. Yeah, there's that five-pointer coming in there. Japan area right now. Pretty deep, folks. Watch the Kumano Ridge here. Watch that area. Major subduction zone. This region here got a mega quake warning put on it uh, about two months ago from the Japanese government because of elevated seismic activity down here. Uh, they feel put the strain on the subduction zone area. So any movement right now uh, around this area is definitely something to watch. We've seen uh, some larger scale activity here in the last 30 days. And if we were to go back the last couple months, you would see that uh, larger event. I think we had a seven pointer out here. Um, and we've been getting a lot of activity south and north here along this ridge area, leaving this region wide open here for a mega quake. There's been a lot of strain built up here. Um, over the years. I can't remember exactly when the last mega quake took place here, but uh, this has some big time potential with all the activity we've been seeing recently north and south here of this region. It, it, you know, If I can draw an X here on the map, it would be right here across this area. Uh, it's a prime region for some uh, large scale activity soon, I feel. All right, folks, um, have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later. Um, just kind of watching some clouds rolling in. We've got a lot of moisture up there right now in the atmosphere. And that low pressure is going to squeeze all that moisture out and just give us a, uh, a really nice soaking out here because we need it. The ground is so dry. But not for long. We've got some much needed rainfall coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on. Stay safe out there.